Chapter 6, The Sixth Day of Christmas Mrs. Browning, I'm concerned about you. Dr. Weber looked over the tops of her wire frame glasses and tapped her pencil on my chart. Her voice sounded stern and foreboding. Something was wrong. Normally, Dr. Weber was as chirpy as a blue jay. Her disposition matched her appearance. She was a sunny yellow blonde with pink rosebud lips and a curvaceous five foot two inch non-pregnant body. I forgave her for being a practically perfect physical specimen. Laura Weber was a wonderful obstetrician, gentle and kind and competent. What's wrong, doctor? I asked as a knot of twisted in my stomach. Have I gained too much weight again? Well, Dr. Weber said, drawing out the word, maybe a little. You've gained 44 pounds, which is on the high side. I could have kissed her for not scolding me. 44 pounds was more than on the high side. It was a perfect amount for someone carrying a 30-pound baby. That's not what's worrying me, though, Dr. Weber said, flipping through the chart, although I certainly hope you won't gain much more weight in the next five weeks. I won't, I said with the full knowledge. I was lying daydreams of Christmas peanut brittle in my a mind as I spoke. I'm more concerned about your elevated blood pressure and the swelling in your arms and legs. But I had swelling during my four other pregnancies. Isn't that normal? Usually, yes. It just seems a little extreme in your case. We'll have to watch it. I'd like you to come in every day for the next few weeks so the nurse can check your edema and blood pressure. Edema. Edema. Edema, I said. That sounds scary. Just a fancy word for water retention, Dr. Weber said. Usually normal, but let's keep an eye on it. I need to come in every day, I asked. Every single day, Dr. Weber said. I didn't like the sound of this. Going to the doctor on a daily basis sounded not only inconvenient, but also frightening. Pregnant women didn't see their doctors every day unless the pregnancies were complicated or life-threatening. I couldn't believe that was happening to me. I had always been the queen of maternity. Pregnancy and birth had been routine, uncomplicated, and boringly normal. In the past, conception had been a snap and pregnancy had progressed smoothly. Childbirth had been predictable with no difficulties or concerns. My babies had always been big, beautiful, and healthy. I was usually back in my jeans by my six-week postpartum checkup. My first obstetrician had said I was born to breed. At the time, I didn't have the good sense to be offended. Perhaps my champion breeding days were over, gone with my thirties. This pregnancy had been difficult, different from the others, both emotionally and physically. I'd been more awkward, gained more weight, and been more tired. I'd worried more and exulted less. I'd felt more upheaval and less elation. Okay, no elation. But serious problems? Please, not for this reproductive goddess. Well, at your age, at these words from Dr. Weber, I realized I hadn't been listening to a word she'd been saying. I'm sorry, I said, I lost track of what you were saying. Dr. Weber smiled. I was saying that at your age, we have to be more careful about these kinds of problems. Haven't we been careful, I said? I've had six ultrasounds and more blood tests than I can count. A lot has changed in the last 10 years since your last baby was born. These tests are all routine now, particularly for older mothers. I nodded. I was that. I had read in my chart that I was an elderly multigravida. I didn't like that term, but it was an apt description for how I felt. I'd like you to limit your salt intake, Dr. Weber continued, and take time to rest. Watch your diet carefully and drink lots of water. Limit salt, I said. You mean I can't have any more jumbo bags of potato chips? I chuckled in a misguided attempt at humor. The doctor was not amused. Absolutely not, she said, and let's watch the Christmas treats too. Okay, I said, my levity squashed. And Mrs. Browning, you need to rest. Let your children clean the house and do the cooking so you can take it easy. My levity returned. If my children cleaned the house, they would be condemned. It was a ridiculous notion, especially since we were getting the house ready to sell. I'll do my best, I said. Okay, Dr. Weber said, her serene expression back. Don't worry, everything's going to be fine. I just want to be on the safe side. Thanks, I said. At your age, it's best. Just call me Methuselah. Okie dokie, Dr. Weber said, her perkiness restored. 
Any questions for me? No, I answered. Everything is fine. Keep the stress low, Dr. Weber said. I almost laughed. Almost. Stress isn't good for babies, the doctor said. Babies in utero can feel the mother's stress level. Oh, great. One more thing to feel guilty about. Anything stressful happening in your life, Dr. Weber asked, besides the rigors of pregnancy, of course. Well, there are a few things. I said, I've thrown up every single day for the last eight months. My children are acting bratty, and one of them thinks I've ruined his life by getting pregnant. My mother-in-law has moved in. I'll soon be moving to Dirt Gulch, Mississippi with a newborn baby. I haven't finished my Christmas shopping, and I have no idea what to fix for Christmas dinner. I'm in charge of the Christmas program at my church, and the tenor section died, literally died. And I stopped, appalled by how awful my life sounded. And I hadn't even mentioned that I'd tried to murder Wanda Wilson. Oh my, Dr. Weber said, you'll have to work hard to relax. I nodded, too numb to think of, any, of something sparkling and witty to say. So, we'll see you in here tomorrow, Dr. Weber cheeped. She opened the door to head off to another patient. Before she left, she turned and added, Oh, by the way, Mrs. Browning, Merry Christmas. I could hear the ex exclamation point at the end of the sentence. Thanks, I said. As the words came out, I felt nausea rising in my throat. I had hoped to make it to the end of the day without morning sickness, but apparently that wasn't going to happen. Same to you, I warbled back as I trudged down the hallway to the restroom. Merry Christmas. Yeah, right.